So let's get started with this first lesson. This one is actually going to be rather simple. This is simply about detecting when a touch lands on the screen of your device and then uh, doing your stuff with it. For instance, knowing when it lands, when it lets go of the device and uh, whatever, you know, touch events that can be detected using a touch. Uh, this is going to be a rather short and rather simple lesson. So let's get started with Android Studio. Here, I'm gonna start a new application. Let's call it uh, Touch Events. I'd like it that way. Events, let's go in here. And now once my Android Studio begins, I don't actually need to do anything with my UI. I just need to get it started with my actual code in here. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually overwrite the untouch event. And within the untouch event, the first thing I wanna get is I actually wanna get my event. So I wanna say, let's call this one, uh, for instance, action. I'm gonna say action is going to be my event. And then from my event, I wanna get the action mask which basically is gonna give us uh, access to matters such as uh, action down or action up uh, or action canceled or stuff as such. Now, if you want, you could actually add a question mark in here because it's an optional value. Or if you want, you could actually go to your touch event and remove that question mark and say, this event will necessarily happen. Uh, you can leave it whichever way it is. I usually prefer to leave it at the default mode that Android Studio suggests. And instead in here, in my event, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna force it because I know it is going to, to happen basically. So now I've got my action in here. Let me get rid of that. I actually could uh, yeah, get myself a little bit more space in here so I could zoom into it. All right, so here, what we wanna be getting is, we wanna see what happens if the action is down. So for instance, I could go ahead and say, if action is going to be motion event dot action down, then uh, here's one situation that I could do be doing stuff with it. Then there is another one I could go ahead and say, so else, uh, in the else I could say if, but there's gonna be so many of those, which makes sense that at this point we use a when instead of using uh, if statements. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, instead of doing this whole uh, so many if statements, why don't we do a when? So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna say, let's do a when for action. And within my when, what I'm gonna be doing is saying, uh, if it was motion event dot action down, then uh, you do something. Let's just put some brackets in front of it for now. Then I'm gonna go ahead and say, if it was motion event dot action uh, cancel, then you do another thing for me. I'm gonna say, if it was motion event dot, uh, I think I wanted to use move. So move, then you do another thing. And then if it was motion event uh, dot up, that's another important one, because that's when you know, when you let go of the touch, which is uh, a lot of the times uh, the situation is really dependent on that. So if it was action up, we do another thing. And then finally in the else, uh, we basically wanna do, uh, in the else we don't really care, we just basically return uh, the super. So I'm gonna say, uh, return the super on touch event. Now, before I go ahead and write the code for this, I wanna show you something, which is this event necessarily wants a Boolean value. So since it wants a Boolean value, all of these wins, they should return some sort of a Boolean value, either true or false. So here I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna get myself a little bit more space. Right now, the only one who is returning is basically else. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's not do that. Let's take out this return and I will show you a little, I know, a very neat way of doing this thing in, in Kotlin in particular. So your action is meant to return some sort of a Boolean value. What I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say return when. And then when you're returning when, if it was action down, uh, do whatever you're supposed to be doing and then do a true at the end of it. And do the same thing for everyone. Do a true at the end of this one, at the end of that one, and at the end of that one. And obviously in situation of else, it automatically returns its own uh, true event as well. Now, what's happening is that we are saying return the result of the when. Now, the result of the when is 
when the action down happens uh, you do something whatever is the effect that you want to happen if the action is up you do another thing but at the end of each of them you also decide uh, whether you want to return true or false which is a very you know neat way of combining when and uh, and return which i really very much you know like when i'm developing stuff with uh, with android studio so here the only thing you want to be doing in here is this i don't really want to do any any code between any of these the only thing i'm going to do is in the action up for instance i'm going to say toast and what i want to toast is this i want to say toast in here uh action is up or let's say touch is lifted and that's you know all we're going to be doing in here it says uh, touch is lifted when the when the touch leaves the surface of the uh, android device let's go ahead and run my application and I'm going to wait for my emulator to load up. Once you should be able to uh, see a toast that shows us touch is lifted whenever we let go of the touch. Uh, for some reason, my Android emulator is in a weird place. So let's wait for the application to load up here. Now, anywhere I'm going to go and touch. And the moment I let go, the touch is now lifted. Let's try it one more time in here. The moment, you know, I go in here, I touch, I let go, touch is lifted. Let's do one more time, touch is lifted. So whenever we touch, it says touch is lifted. We could actually uh, make this the opposite of it. I'm gonna cut, cut this actually, put it between the touch down and say touch is down. The reason I'm cutting it is simply because I don't want the two of them to show up on top of each other and confuse the matters. So I'm only gonna use one of them for the touch down now. And here, the moment we touch, it says touch is down. And that's pretty much end of it for this lesson, a very simple one, making sure that uh, we can uh, touch uh, the surface and by the touch, we can actually uh, get the event of what's happening. What I would encourage you to do on your own is uh, to touch an object. Try to find a way that the touch is affecting only a particular object or maybe the children of a particular object. Uh, give that a try on your own and then move on to next lesson.